Hi, welcome back to Retro Rewind. Dave Harris, your host here. And in studio right now, wow, we have a legend. Uh, a legend, will you please uh, identify yourself? Hi, this is Morris Gibber the Bee Gees, and I'm here with Dave Harris. And I'm not kidding you about being a legend. A member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Songwriters Hall of Fame, and the Vocal Group Hall of Fame. What an honor. Morris, thank you so much for being here on Retro Rewind. Thanks, Dave. It's good to be here. You know, I love the new CD. This is where I came in, had a chance to listen to it many times already. It's it's different. It sounds a whole lot like uh, your your 60s style, the way you guys did it back then. Why is that? The reason why it's it's sort of similar to the way we used to record in the late 60s is because we wanted to get back to that innocence. We wanted that um, sort of uh, style where it's very simple, um, Beatlesque, uh, whatever, in that sort of genre. And to make more of the voices more forward, more prominent, uh, and good acoustic and, and electrical guitar work and things like that that make it sound like that period. And right. it was just the same as uh, this is where I came in particularly, and she keeps on coming yeah. we're from that period because yeah. it's uh, the beginning intro, the guitar, and stuff like that, and she keeps on coming right. is very 60s. Right. So. Uh, I think that's why I think a lot of the songs that go back actually over five decades, I should say, of influences. I think you guys uh, kind of approached the album of the production a little different this time, right? Because, you know, last time you had a lot of producers. This one is just mainly you guys. And, and it, it appears that uh, maybe you guys did this kind of solo, like did some of your stuff uh, away from each other. Is that true? Each time we, we start an album, we like to approach things differently. And the last one we had like six different um, wonderful producers with us. Uh, this one... We wanted to approach differently again, so uh, to to get some space and time, we thought would be a good idea is to each brother go off, write two or three songs, whatever, mm -hmm. and pick the best two, uh, and we play them to all to each other. And we all did that, and it's it's a self expression thing. It was uh, it right. was fun. Right. Uh, we each one did them differently. Robin went to England uh, to record his two tracks with Pete Fortesi. Uh I did my back tracks and mine with John Merchant. And um, Barry did his with the band and John, and it just each each track was different. And then mm -hmm. we finished the album together, so uh, it was it was a nice different way. Again, it was a fresh way of approaching the album. Yeah, you know, I, I find that interesting. It kind of gives the listener, the fan, you know, a little taste of what you guys might do, you know, away from each other. You know. Yeah, I think it gives us some individuality, uh, a bit more um, prominence on each brother's um, each individual uh, feelings on songwriting and what their impression is of what they would do. Um, without the other two, if you like. Uh, but each brother, we sort of knew in our minds when we were doing it what each brother would sort of like, so we, we, right. we sort of had a way to go. Yeah. Uh, but once again, it's uh, it was like doing it all together, even though it was solo. You know, a big song on the charts for you guys right now, uh, and deservedly so, love the song, This Is Where I Came In. Tell us a little bit about that uh, about that song. I love this track. Uh, once again, it was done around the mic sort of attitude, Um it reminded me of the time when we would, uh, when I saw the Beatles doing um, You're Gonna Lose That Girl in Hell, where they're all around the mic in the studio right, right. and they're recording all together, singing <laughs> and playing at the same time. It right. was that kind of feeling. So, uh, once again, very Beatlesque, but it was, it was a 60s period that was innocent to us, and that's what came across in this song, and I loved it. You know, another great song on your uh, latest album, This Is Where I Came In, is uh, She Keeps On Coming. Uh, a little bit about that song. Once again, 60s influences. Um, it uh, reminds me of a really... Um, Actually, it's a cross sort of between a Kinks and uh, I would say Dire Straits. I guess it was it was sort of strange mixture. Yeah, but it was but mostly sixties influence once again with the harmonies and right. the, and that chorus and the guitar riff and things. Yeah, and uh, it uh, it always reminds us again of another innocent period, which which is uh, the reason it's on the album. You know, a great song is also Wedding Day. It kind of um, harkens back to the uh, the old Bee Gees uh, love love song. You know. Um, I guess imprint, if you will. Tell us about uh, Wedding Day. Wedding Day is a classic. It's um, we we thought about doing the lyrics for this, and we thought, how can you be subtle about a wedding day? And we finally gave up and just said, no, we can't. <laughs> and um, right. we wrote it exactly what it really means. It's something that is deep in our hearts and in, in each one of us. So Wedding Day is, I would say, as people have called some things, a BG classic. Yeah. But uh, to us, it's one of the most beautiful songs I think we've written. Oh, I agree. Such a great song. Uh, now, another great song on the album. I mean, in fact, they're all great, but I'm just picking a few that kind of uh, stand out. Uh, Sacred Trust. This is an interesting story, Sacred Trust. Um, it's had a bit of an adventure, this song. Um, it was one of the first songs we wrote for the uh, for uh, a bunch of songs we were getting together for other artists, and the Backstreet Boys approached us for this and, and asked if, that, if we would write a song, and Sacred Trust came to mind, and we, we, we did the song, and 
made the demo and and the, the guys loved it but unfortunately the the management uh didn't write the song so they couldn't record it so we decided well what the hell we're gonna do it because <laughs> we loved it yeah. and uh that's the reason why it ended up on the, up on the album because we we really believed in it and it's a, it's a great song Oh, it sure is. I'm glad that you guys actually uh, were the ones that did it. I think you did it maybe just a little bit better than what those guys would do. Not taking anything away from the Backstreet Boys, though. All right, Man in the Middle. Uh, great track. I think you kind of worked on this a little uh, a little bit uh, on your own. Tell us about that one. Oh, Man in the Middle is um, is exactly what it is. It's me in the middle of everything, really. <laughs> and um, <laughs> It could be about relationships. It could be uh, about uh, me as a brother, as many people have suggested. Uh, but really, it's just one of the songs that came from nowhere. I was just humming this melody in the car, and uh, I thought, I've got to, got to call John. <laughs> got to get in the studio. <laughs> yeah. And uh, once I started doing that and doing my own backtracks as well, because I knew exactly where I wanted to go with it, but I wasn't quite sure. But then I asked Barry if he'd do the lyrics with me on this one, because I needed a bit more of... Uh, I wanted credibility. I wanted... Um, not, not credibility. I wanted... Um, the song to have some a bit more lyrical substance than I thought I could provide by myself. So yeah, yeah. It, Barry became part of that with me. But the the whole song was a whole atmosphere of uh, being caught in the middle of a very complicated plan, which is life, really. Absolutely. You know, I remember a few years back when you guys went into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I was just so elated for you guys because you'd been through so much. But I remember Barry saying that you guys were the enigma with the stigma. Well, what do you think that comment was about? I think we've also we've always been a bit of an enigma. I think, uh, and Barry meant that very lightheartedly. He didn't okay. mean it seriously. All right. It's just that we always seem to be uh, sort of there, but we're not there. <laughs> right. And um, it really was a, a fun thing that we thought of ourselves as being an enigma with a stigma. <laughs> and it was really from the, um, I guess, the little uh, bit of the backlash from from fever and stuff, which gave us that sort of right. stigma, if you like, of the of the expression. Right. But not now, no, of course not. I mean, that life has been unbelievable. I mean, everything happens for a reason, and uh, today it couldn't be better. I mean, we don't think about being an enigma anymore. It's just a, a nice feeling to have respect. Well, you certainly do. This album just debuted in the top 20 on the Billboard charts, by the way. Congratulations. You know, it's so nice to see you guys finally getting what you deserve, all the great awards and um, accolades and stuff like that. What is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and you know, some of these achievements uh, mean to you guys? You know, I don't think like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or, or the Songwriters Hall of Fame or American Music Awards Lifetime Achievement and, and, and all these wonderful achievement awards... We, we, we do not take them lightly. We, we're very honored to get those things. Okay. And to be particularly inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Songwriters Hall of Fame, right. those two particularly right. uh, were like dreams. I mean, not so much the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because that was young, but when we were very, very young, I remember people talking about people like uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein and George M. Cohen and uh, even down to, to, to later on to Henry Mancini and people like this that were in the, in the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and we'd never heard of that. <laughs> so it was a sort of a goal for us to get into that, and we were inducted in that about five years ago. Right. And that, to me, was uh, having our picture on stage next to Rodgers and Hammerstein really thrilled the hell out of me, <laughs> and I'll never forget that night. But the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, that, that's an institution now which everybody uh, that's been around as long as we have you know, should be in there. But we were blessed that we got in, and... Um, I'm, once again, I'm honored. I've still got my mug. Well, speaking of songwriting, let's talk a little bit about your style. You guys pretty much do things uh, your way, right? I mean, uh, I mean I'm mean, i sure you're influenced, but um, how do you guys go about doing your writing? We, we really do it our way um, when we write songs. Uh, we don't really, we're influenced by some kinds of grooves sometimes, but, but not necessarily um, melodies or... I mean, I love atmospheres. I, lo I like to capture atmospheres on mm -hmm. records and, right. and on CDs and stuff, and it it's sort of puts you... Uh, we're a place where I always used to go back to the days before videos and stuff where you have headphones on right. and you just lie back and you listen to a CD right. or, or you listen to a record in those days yeah. and it would take you away. You'd yeah. visualize your own video or whatever. That's right. But you would really get involved into the, into the music. And that's why I think a lot of it today is, is very dance. Um, um, I'm not going to say Winnie Boppers, but Teeny Bopper uh, sort of uh, images with with the kids, uh, the kid acts and stuff, which I think is fantastic because, I mean, the kids need their music too and is an audience and it's wonderful. And I think they're great pop records, but they don't dictate what we write. We can do songs like that, but that, that wouldn't be us. That wouldn't be in us. We've never stayed in any period. We've always moved on. Right. So right. whatever music's going on, we're still influenced by songs like Stevie Wonder and, and people of, of great, um, credible songwriting. 
and uh, some of Elton's songs and Eric and there's a few of us around and, and Phil Collins and things that write these incredible songs and Paul McCartney. So we're all like going, well, this is today's music. We can do that, but why? We, we don't even have the same audience. Right. So when we write songs, we move on. We don't write a song, for instance, like Staying Alive Now because right. we've done that. Right. So we, we like to move on and try to get as many influences from different cultures, which is more of our influence than anything. What does this latest album mean to you? Where does it stand up um, as compared to some of your other albums in the past? Yeah, I think when we when we, made, when we were making this album, uh, you know, we, we believe what we do. We, we just write, we write songs that we love to hope, well, hopefully that everybody will love as well as, as much as, as we do. Right. So I think the sounds, everything that's on it is something that we just, the thing is, I think it's because we produced it ourselves. Okay. And I think we had total, uh, no one to, to answer to or anything like, we've always more or less produced ourselves, but this was the first time that we've actually just sat down and just done it. Right. And uh, did whatever we love to write and play. Okay. And I think that shows in the album. And I, I think it's one of the greatest of many albums we've made. But to me, because it's fresh and it's new and we did it differently, it's, it's, there's an excitement about a new album. It doesn't have to be the greatest, but it's, it's, there's an excitement that you capture when you make the album. And it continues when you promote it. Okay, Morris, you guys have won a lot of awards, received a lot of um, recognition and, uh, as we mentioned earlier, accolades and stuff. That would tend to, you know, make you think that you're successful. But what does success mean to you? How do you rate success? I think what rates a successful uh, anything, really, is getting through it, uh, getting to the other side. I think you're successful if you're healthy and, and, um, and you'll be able to do the things that you love to right. do as right. your work. Yeah. Uh, things like that. Yeah. Um, so rating success for us, we're still three kids from Manchester. It's very hard to, to, to perceive ourselves as other people uh, see us. We've been called icons, legends, and God, I can't identify with that at all. <laughs> I mean, I just something that we've been able to do all, all our lives, something that we've loved to do. Yeah. And had an audience. We've been blessed with an audience as well. So we're very, very fortunate. We don't take it for granted. We don't... Um, we tread lightly, you know, we, we, we're just so blessed that we can do this, you know. So I, I, a success, I think, is seeing the audience that you play to when you're doing a live show. That, for me, is, is the epitome of success when you see everybody smiling and loving what you do. I mean, and, and being healthy to do it, you know. So, And, of course, most of all, for me, anyway, being sober. So that's success, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. if you don't have those things, I wouldn't have any of the other. You know, there's no doubt that you guys have inspired a lot of people and influenced a lot of people. Who do you think... Who do you think out there right now uh, are inspired by the Bee Gees? Everybody. <laughs> no. Um, in some songs I do, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard someone who's trying to do a similar thing. But um, I think particularly in the um, NSYNC uh, zone, I've heard a few that sound very much like us. Yeah. But that's, that's um, out of respect. That's not out of you know any, any other motive. It's something that people say, oh, God, I wish we could sound like that. Right. And, and using us as a measuring stick to see what it sounds like, is, yeah. is, it's an honor, you know, to have that respect. You know, all three of you have children, um, and they seem to be following uh, in your footsteps. Tell us a little bit about, uh, about your kids, and, and uh, do you support them in this uh, world of music? Uh, actually, I'm very fortunate with my kids. They, they both love the business. Um, Good. Mind you, anything that they would have uh, chosen to, to have gone into for, for a life, uh, I would have supported anyway, either right. way. Right. My daughter's band is called Skylar, and her, her name is Samantha. And my son is Adam, and her boyfriend, Laz, who's the lead guitarist of the band. Uh, they really all get it mixed in together when they write the songs, and they've got a great chemistry going on. So it's... Um, Reminded me in the beginning of Romanian or Gypsy Pop. I'm not, I wasn't quite <laughs> sure. But uh, I, I'm just, I'm very proud of them. They, they, they've written some great songs. Uh, and uh, myself and John Merchant have been working on it and doing eight tracks we've already recorded. And we've got three more to do to make the album up. And when that comes, it's going to happen. And um, now we have our management also interested too. So it, there's a lot of good things happening. And uh, I'm very proud of them. Very good, very good. You guys have been doing this a long time, over 40 years. What motivates you to keep going and doing this? I think what motivates us in everything we do is the love that we have for what we do. Uh, I think the passion is still there. Yeah. Uh, some people call it hunger or, or uh, <laughs> this great 
uh, ongoing pushing thing to to make you do what you love to create, right. and hopefully you try to to see if oh, well, hopefully people will love what you're doing. Of course, that that kind of motivation of always trying to be better. Right. Uh, let's write a song that no one's ever heard before. Right, right. What's that incredible song that everyone's <laughs> never going to forget? Right. And and things like that. You, you, it's always a goal that you go for when you when you start an album or write, start writing again. And to do this ever since we were kids. It's it's. It's it's important we learn in the early years to write to keep moving forward on writing. Never stay in the one area. Never stay in the sa- as decades as we would call them, if you like. Yeah, yeah. Because every year they always seem to write off the artists or songwriters that did well in that period. Now right. it's a new decade. You're gone. Right. But these are the people that last. The songs that last. And if you if you're fortunate enough to be to be a songwriter like that that can make songs that people always remember, mm-hmm. then then you've really made your mark. Mm-hmm. That's that's also another definition of success. Mm-hmm. When it's played all the time, many years later, and it still stands up, uh, sound-wise as well as credibility and substance in lyric form and and melody line, and neither of us can write or read music, so we're blessed with something that we love to do. So if we have that love, I don't think it'll ever fade, and and most of all the passion. You know, here's the big question everyone wants to know: Are you guys going to go back out on the road so we can see you guys again? We're planning right now um, some major dates for next year. Uh, we don't know whether it's going to be uh, back-to-back yet. I don't think any of us fancy you back-to-back tour because <laughs> a lot of traveling involved. Yeah. So we're working out a system right now how we can do the world. We would love to wow. tour the world. Yeah. And uh, I think next year hopefully we'll at least start it because I, I, I think uh, it'll be a great fun. And we've been to, to, to countries uh, and there's some countries we've never been to and, I, and I'd love to go to those places and um, meet the fans there too because once again that's the greatest way of paying back and being on that stage you wouldn't be up there mm-hmm. and and I, I love to see the different age groups and the people we've affected and it's um, it's an incredible feeling and I think that's part of the passion as well I was talking about earlier is that we still have the passion to do that too oh, it's awesome can't wait to see you guys all right Morris we appreciate you uh, taking the time out to talk to us and if we could leave you with one question here it's more of a statement than a question uh, what would you say to your fans right now that are listening? You know, having fans that stick with you uh, through all the years and the loyalty, uh, once again, is an amazing blessing. Um, and I, I'd love to say to, a hi to every one of you personally and to thank you personally for all the uh, love and support you've given us. And um, one day, I hope we're going to be there and we can play. I'm looking forward to that. I'd like to say to our new fans, Welcome. Welcome to the world (laughs) of this uh, sometimes very confusing music. Um, I think it's wonderful having new fans. I mean, when they hear a song on the radio or something that that gets them off and they don't know who it is, and it's it's something for us like a a real kick because they realize who we are. And and even if the mums and dads loved you, and even in our case, the the grandparents sometimes (laughs) loved us, Mm -hmm. it's it doesn't seem to be any barrier between them. They still go and get the record, get the CD, or whatever. And uh, because they love the song. And I think that, for us, once again, is is part of the uh, longevity. All right, Morris Gibb with the Bee Gees. Thank you so much. And their latest CD in stores right now, This Is Where I Came In.